Oh, and one more question. Okay. Forgive me, but if you were to pick a favorite invasive, the one that you find the best, or the one that you hate the most, oh. what would it be? So, so the worst invasive I know, basically, sure. that would be hydrilla. Hydrilla. That's the plant that I've been working on since when it first showed up on Lady Bird Lake. I mean, excuse me, on Lake Austin in 1999. And it can grow in water as deep as 30 feet. It can, when it, when it hits the surface, unlike most aquatic plants, it doesn't stop growing. It continues to grow. And so left alone, you get these three to four foot thick mats that are literally almost like bales of hay floating on the water surface where birds can walk on the surface. Boats cannot get through this stuff. Um, and it can regrow from a tiny fragment, even an inch long, as long as there's one little node with leaves on it. And so um, we've been fighting hydrilla all these many years, and we got control of it for quite a few years, and now it's back up to over 500 acres on Lake Austin. So wow. that's, my, that's the one that I dislike the most from a professional standpoint. From a personal standpoint, point, because I only, I live out in the Texas Hill Country, the plant I probably hate the most on my own property is KR Blue Stem. Uh, the grass that you see growing along the sides of all the roads in the country, out in the hill country around this area, it's what's blooming right now. It has kind of a little purple feathery looking flower and it has completely taken over pastures uh, yeah. and, com and out competed all of our native grasses and you know replaced our beautiful native prairies with just this horrible monoculture. And it apparently the birds won't eat the seeds and it doesn't provide very much wildlife um, nutritional value. And like so many other native plants, it was planted on purpose by whether it was Department of Agriculture or you know ranchers or something in Texas and throughout other parts of the country. Um, to be able to limit erosion and provide food for cattle, and now it has like taken over entire ranches. Mm, so yes. that's the, probably the one I like the, the least on a personal it's, level. It's funny that everyone always seems to think, oh, if we introduce this, they'll take it. It'll care of fix this. it, right? But right. then it's a problem. Yeah, exactly. So that's all. That's that whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of those examples. And with hydrilla, I have the funniest story about hydrilla. Me and my friend, we once went down to the lake and our mothers were talking up on the rocks. Mm -hmm. And we were walking in the lake and my friend, he's looking down and he says, Ben, what's all this stuff growing in the mud? Because mm -hmm. he knows I know yeah, all yeah, about yeah. plants. And I said, oh, I'm not sure, but I think it's hydrilla. But I was, I, well, I didn't know yeah. a lot back then. Yeah. And we were just walking on and on and it just, covered everything mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we would like to go fishing and stuff mm -hmm. but nothing i mm -hmm. mean it went out so far and you would sink if you yeah. got on it but oh, in yeah. some places you could stand i mean yeah. it's just just it and destroys you could... there was nothing else yeah and the worst part with with recreation is besides the fact that it make boats can't move through it very easily it's really dangerous to try and swim in because it's so thick that it can tangle around your legs. And it's kind of a, it's not a real soft, gentle feeling plant. It has little serrated edges, so it, it's not like cactus spines, but they're irritating feeling. Yeah. And people have gotten tangled up in it and not being able to make it back to shore. And so, you know, yeah, that's, I mean, it's a significant public safety issue. But anyway, that's my professional. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>